All right, so we're coming to you here from the home office slash memorabilia collection cache slash whatever else you want to call it with the dogs and the cat. We have a cat now, by the way. She was actually here before Lily. She was a barn cat from work that was born while I was there, so she came home with me. But anyway, um... Got back from the show Sunday afternoon, get everything unloaded, and by that time I was I was whooped. I and Monday was terrible. I was dragging so bad it wasn't even funny. I felt like I needed a vacation to recover from the vacation. So Laney, you need to come on, Laney. But it was a good time. I, I think Shelly enjoyed herself. I probably should have put a disclaimer in some of the videos that uh, if you saw Shelly driving around by herself, kind of leave her be because she's not used to all the attention and she got swarmed quite a, few, quite a few times by several people. But I don't think she minded it too bad. So she seemed to enjoy herself. Um, And I'll bet, yeah, I got, I talked to so many people while I was down there, both from the channel or that, you know, watch the channel and just people that I randomly struck up conversations with while we were watching stuff going on. And I talked to people from, obviously, you know, the, you know, you got your general area, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, or Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and then Tennessee, Kentucky, Arkansas, Georgia, West Central Texas, Minnesota, um... Nebraska, I got to talk to a guy from England, which really threw me off, um, and then I didn't actually get to talk to him, but, uh, if anybody watched the video from Saturday, I got the, got the video of those two international experimental utility tractors, um, those little front wheel assists, the guy that bought those tractors and is taking them to Austria was there. I just never got to talk to him. I got to talk to the guy that was hauling the tractors for him Saturday evening while I was getting loaded up. And it's actually the same. I, I thought, I figured by the size of them that those tractors were new Germany tractors that got brought over here. Now, they were built, designed and built here. Um, got loaned out to a university after Harvester. And they were supposed to go back to Case IH when um, the university got done with them. Well, nobody read the contract that great, apparently. And the university that had them sold them. So now they're leaving the country and they're going to Austria. And after they left the show there, the guy that was hauling them was taken to a port. And they were getting loaded on a shipping container. And they're leaving leaving the country. So, um but yeah, I had a really good time. Got to meet meet a lot of awesome people. Uh, everybody that watches the channel that I met down there was really great. Um, had a lot of cool conversations. Uh, oh, I missed a couple states. New York State, New Hampshire. Um, yeah, just people from all over, which is partly why I love going to that show because you will, you will get a more diverse population of people from all over the country and the world at that show than you will get at any other show you will ever attend. It is, it is nuts, the people that go to that show. Um, so they had people they know for certain as far away from California, obviously at least one guy from England, at least one guy from Austria. It was, it's just, there's guys there from Canada, just all over. Um, so it was pretty neat. I'm ready for 2025 already. Um, so, but I figured real quick, I would show you everything that I drug home. Um, we'll start with the stuff that I actually bought. Um, so I got two VHS tapes, uh, Agco factory videos. One's called What's in the Box. Um, about parts and service from Agco. And then this one is the 9600 and 9800 series Agco Alice Power Shift tractors. So, hopefully here in the next couple weeks, depending on what time allows, because we're going to get really busy really quick here. After I get my life sorted back out from being gone this week. Um, so, I'd like to get these digitized here in the next couple weeks and get them up so we can watch them. Um, so I got those, and I got this 
yardstick one side advertises uh, the speed X bottoms more speed less draft three widths of cut deeper and faster with Oliver speed X and then this side advertises Oliver corn heads uh, two three and four row two three four and six row adjustable corn heads um, so that was neat then from the Oliver gang, I bought a serial number index. I used to have one of these for the longest time. I carried, carried it in my wallet, which I'm not going to do with this one. Because you carry it in your wallet and they like to break out around the rivet. And then you got a bunch of loose leaves and they end up getting lost, which is what happened to my last one. But um, this one covers pretty much all the Oliver tractors and crawlers from 1930 to 1976. So they're kind of handy to have around. And then I finally got a new pocket knife. Um, this one is a uh, utility knife style so that I can replace blades because I have a part of what wears my knives out so fast as I use them for dirt poker, checking seed depth and crust and stuff like that. So, but this one's got the Oliver Shield burn into it on the one side. So that was nice. And then also from the Oliver Gang, I bought a four men who grow t-shirt and then i bought a bunch of white and oliver binders these three are all the same um they're from south bend dad's had one of these for years that uh he's got the 77 manuals and stuff in but now i got three more and then i bought a white farm equipment binder that apparently at some point had some John Deere manuals in it because the tag on the side says JD 210 and 310 tractor loader backhoe. So there's that. This one is neat. It's a factory 1600 shop manual binder. Um, obviously it doesn't have a manual in it, but I just so happen to have an original print 1600 shop manual at home that I bought from Floyd County that doesn't have a binder. So I can put an Oliver factory print manual and an Oliver factory binder, which is kind of neat. And then there's this guy here, which is a nice big thick one, which works good for holding uh, the bigger shot manuals and stuff. So there's those. And then I bought a couple brochures. This one's an Oliver Better Farming for, and Better Living for 1968 full line catalog. Um, the dealer it came out of was Hewer Implement Company, Highway 20 East in Dearborn in Waterloo, Iowa. And apparently the, the gentleman that they mailed it to was a Paul Hirschberger of Jessup, Iowa. So we'll probably go through this at a later date. But um, I want to start collecting these things and see if I can come up with, a, eventually end up with a full set. Because I think they started in 60 or 61. And then I think they went almost into the 80s because I know, well I've got at least one white one in there. I don't know if I got, I got a cockshut one. I don't think I've got any other Oliver ones. So this I think is my first Oliver one, but. So I bought that and then I bought a brochure for our 21 two-way plow. Cause we don't really have anything on that yet. So we'll probably look at those two brochures at a later date. Cause I need to get back into doing some of those tractor memorabilia videos. And then the last thing that I actually bought myself was this thing. Come on, this here. It's just a burnout of a finest and farm machinery shield. I haven't decided yet if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna have Shelly paint it for me or if I'm gonna just put it out and let it rust, but I think I'm gonna hang it somewhere on the bank barn because it looks like it would look good on a bank barn. I should have bought two and then I could have put one on each of the sliders, but oh well. So that covers everything that I bought myself. Um, but I was also given a bunch of stuff, so let me get organized here and then we'll take a minute to look at that. Okay, so we will start with the stuff that's actually not Oliver. Um, so I ended up with this stuff from a gentleman named Dylan Lynch. Um, who actually bought those Ferguson uh, plow points off of me and I took them down there and delivered them to him. 
Um, there are some pay stubs and a receipt and an IH. I've never seen a bolt like this. If I remember right, he said this is an IH number four plow bolt, but it's literally just a square head with a bolt shank. It's it's the goofiest thing I've ever seen. I've, I've never seen one before. He set this in my hand, um, but he, he gave these to me. Um, but they are from the receipt and stuff is from a or the the pay stubs are from an IH dealer in uh Loyola, South Dakota. Um Remp Remfer and Rot. Interesting set of names. Um so he gave these to me just because they're neat. And then uh, this was a different dealer and I can't remember where he said this was but it's Crane Farmers Exchange Hardware and Groceries Plumbing Seeds Fertilizer Hot Point Appliances um, but it's uh, it was an MFA and he said it was basically like a big co-op and he said you went into the you went into the store and you bought everything from fabric to your tractors he said it was it was everything um so that was kind of neat and the, the 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 ironic part about it is um i actually went back and talked to him a few times just because he was fun to talk to but um after he gave me these i think he gave these to me on thursday i went and saw him and i think it was saturday i went back and talked to him and he said that there was actually two guys that stopped by his his uh booth down there that worked at this dealership that knew who this guy was at Randhul. what are the odds that you run into two guys from south dakota that worked at a dealership that knew a guy that you had pay stubs for in your memorabilia collection like that was nuts so he gave me those um and i'm gonna put his contact i think i'll just i think i'll just put his email that way it keeps his phone private but um i've got his card and this dude is a walking encyclopedia on ih number eight little genius plows um i i am not over exaggerating he knows everything about them and he specializes in older ih new old stock plow parts he has a little bit of everything um he had some other implement parts um he had a little bit of ever he had some oliver plow parts he had some ferguson plow parts uh like i say he's got a little bit of everything but the vast majority of what he has is international plow chief and super chief new old stock parts um and like i say he is very heavy into the ih number eight little geniuses so if you're looking for international new old stock plow parts or you have any questions on IH Little Genius Plows, um, like I say, I'm going to put Dylan's contact information down in the video description. Um, so, like I say, IH Little Genius Plows or Plow Parts, contact Dylan. Um, so moving on, a gentleman from the Heartland Oliver Collectors uh, gave me these. He actually gave me some stuff at the last show too, but they're coasters. These ones are uh, I think all of the versions. That one's a That one's a heart par era Just just after like Late 20s early 30s Oliver Shield That's a grill But there's a few of them in there and then he's these got some tractors on them. So those are some coasters and then he gave me some key changers. Actually, this one's got an Oliver Shield, and then this one is a Heartland Oliver Collector member. And then he also gave me one that had the WFE logo on it, but that one's got a home already. I needed a keychain for the, the 112, so that's down on the 112. But he gave me three keychains. And then a gentleman by the name of... Hold on, I want to get his name right. Okay, sorry, I wanted to get his name right. He actually emailed me some pictures he took. Um... A guy by the name of Michael gave me this Oliver flag, which I think I'm going to hang up out in the new barn. Um, I've actually got a few things I want to get hung up there, so, so this will go good with them. Um, but it's got the 
the Oliver Ogo oval logo and says finest and farm machinery on it so like I say that's probably gonna get hung up out in the new barn from the rafters um and he also took a bunch of pictures on Friday of me out disking on the tee and I'll probably tie, uh, tie those in on the end of this video so the guy that gave me this flag is the guy that took the photos of me you're gonna see here toward the tail end so there's that and then a gentleman by the name of Adam gave me this manual for a 3241 three-point plow, which we've got a we've got a 3241 that I think has only ever actually been in one video a long, long time ago. And we don't have any books for it, so that worked out handy. Um, it's a little tore up, but not terrible. So that was nice and then he also invited me to come down he's a member of i can't remember the railroad but he's a he's a member of a historical railroad down there and they got some steamers and some diesels and stuff that he worked on and he invited me down to come take a tour of the place kind of one-on-one -on -one. so i think i'm going to take him up on that offer here at some point it's probably not going to be anytime soon because like i say we're about to get really busy really fast because i got four weeks to get ready for harvest and it feels like that's not nearly enough time i think i'm going to be all right i think i'm making it out i think my i think my mind is making it out worse than what it actually is but um i just i'm i'm a little i'm a little worried about it so but i got one more thing i want to touch on but i gotta i gotta look real quick Okay, so real quick, one more thing before we finish this up here. Um, all these binders I got from a gentleman by the name of Andrew Ginter. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right. He's actually friends with Dylan. They were right next to each other down there at the show. And it's funny because Andrew literally lives 10 minutes from me. I, I have a field like down near his house. Um, didn't even know he was there. He has, I think, what did what did Dylan tell me? Like 20,000 cataloged part numbers of plow parts for basically every make. Um, so, and plus other, obviously other literature and memorabilia and stuff, but he, he's really big into the plow parts um, of all makes. So if you need plow parts of any kind um i'm also going to put his email down in the video description um because like i say he he was a walking talking encyclopedia as well on plow parts of all kinds and like i say he's he buys and he buys and sells plow parts and literature so and like i say he's all colors and dylan specializes in a lot of early IH stuff. He's got cast iron parts and all sorts of stuff. So, but I think that covers everything that I needed to cover. Sorry we got a little long. I just wanted to make sure that we got everybody. Yes, Laney, that's good stuff for you to sniff. Um, I wanted to make sure we got everything covered and everybody talked about that needed to talked about. Um, so, like I say, for everybody that gave me stuff you didn't have to do it i'm grateful um and for everybody that showed up to the meet and greet i'm i'm happy you did i had a good time talking to everybody um hopefully i wasn't a disappointment but um like i say i really enjoyed meeting everybody and it was a really good time and hopefully we can do it again in two years so with that being said, I'm going to go throw some dinner in the oven because I am hungry and I'm going to clean this stuff up and get organized here. And this weekend's going to be interesting because I got to get hay made and hopefully get that other hay field planted. So with that being said, that's it for this one. We'll catch you guys on the next one, which will be getting back to work. I'm sorry, I forgot one thing and I wanted to make sure everybody was included. I also had a, a viewer who actually is a was a college student who was taught by a guy that I went to college with, so small world. Um, he gave me this Kinsey hat, so...
I guess I wanted to make I, I wanted to make sure that this got included because we don't want to leave anybody out. So, um, and he actually wants to come up and look at the grain cart and because he wants to build one like it. So, because obviously he works at a dealer, so it's a little little personal for him. So, anyway. That is it for this one, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Okay, so there is one more thing that I missed, and like I say, I wanted to make sure everybody got mentioned here, um, and I forgot about this because it's here at Mom and Dad's, not at my house. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Josh gave me this cast body Oliver hydroelectric cylinder that is in fairly decent shape. Um, Obviously, it's probably going to need a rebuild, which I've got another one laying around here somewhere that I need rebuilt or need to get rebuilt. So at some point, we'll probably do a video and I will do this one and that other one and have two of these things rebuilt and on the shelf ready to rock and roll. So like I say, I just wanted to make sure everybody got mentioned and I remembered that this thing was sitting over here. So Josh, thanks for the cylinder and we'll... uh get it rebuilt and i'm sure i can find a home port somewhere because lord knows i got enough stuff that takes hydraulic cylinders so actually i got a plow that needs one so at least one plow that needs one maybe i'm sure there's something else i know for sure i got why well, i got a four bottom plow that needs a cylinder so anyway that being said um that should finally cover everybody so for real this time that's it for this one we'll catch you guys on the next one